Hi everybody, uh, welcome to Caesar Drums videos where today I'm going to be talking about the wood shop in which I build my drums and I am separating the videos about how I build my drums into two main sections and today we're going to be looking at the area of my workshop in which dust collection is needed to prevent uh, dust from getting onto other parts of the drums for their final stages. So today we're going to be where the actual wood is chosen, cut, and made into a frame so that I can finish it in the other half of the shop. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the wood. That's what you need to make a drum, right? So sometimes I get wood as raw as these chunks of black walnut. This particular tree was from a local historical site that's a black walnut grove and the tree was actually struck with lightning and then cut down and donated to Caesar Drums which has been absolutely fabulous because the wood is unbelievably beautiful. It's excellent grain, but because of the way that the wood was cut already, I have to be very concerned with the direction of the grain and how I mill it to turn it into a wood frame. And what I do is I have to make sure that the pieces of wood from this type of raw wood are cut into a shape that's small enough where the wood grain is not an issue. And what I do is I cut it into these smaller chunks and then I section it out so that I get smaller pieces of this size which still has an excellent grain visible that I can turn into a lovely drum and I will make the sections for my frames out of this. And this would be about the size of wood piece that I use to create a 13 moon drum that ends up being a approximately 19 inches or uh, 40, that's about a 47, 48, in, 48 centimeter diameter drum. And I'll show you, the, which is this one, but I'll show you those in a little while. Um, or another thing that I do is I already have pre-planed planks of draw of wood to turn into a frame. And I'll show you one of these behind me. This is a, a piece of white pine. And it's wider than I like to use for a shallow shell drum. So sometimes I have to rip wood of this size. Or sometimes it's too thick and I have to recut it and actually make it thinner. But typically I can take a plane of this size, a plank of this type, and cut it into the right size lengths, keeping the grain of the wood in the right order, and then make the pieces angle around so that it looks like one continuous piece of wood and get the shapes that I need for the special Caesar drums that I build. Um, now I'll take you to where the first cutting action actually happens in terms of making a frame. Here's where I'll use this really ancient, lovely 14 inch bandsaw to mill the uncut wood. And once I get those pieces that I showed you earlier, then here I can cut them into the angled pieces that I need. Uh, you know, different degrees will make different numbered of size, uh, excuse me, number sided drums. So five sided drum, seven sided drum, 13 sided drum, etc can be made by adjusting the angle of, of this miter saw. And then I will cut my pieces and test them, piece them together, and move forward to the next phase. Dun, dun, dun. This part will probably be cut. 
but maybe not. <laughs> uh, we will uh, eventually end up using the table saw to do various cuts, but sometimes what I may do in the case of the wood that is milled from the raw stumps is I will plane it on one end with the table saw so that I can get a flat edge to work with. And then I will glue the pieces together using just a regular ratchet, which you, know, you can see this type of video on YouTube regularly, but uh, effectively what I will do is I will piece my frame together loosely, use a ratchet strap to hold it together, glue it with what I like to use, Gorilla Glue. I'll give a little plug to Gorilla Glue here. Uh, and the reason I like to use this is because it's got a very quick set time. Um, but it holds really, really strongly with um, some techniques like adding a little bit of water to the, to the wood before you glue to open up the pores. And then I'll end up with a frame. And here's what the frame looks like before anything happens. So you try to match the wood grain around so that it looks like the continuous piece of wood from which it came, but it has nothing other than a flat surface. It's very raw. And that's okay because we're going to fix all of that. The next thing I do is take a, a frame of this nature to the routing machine. And with different bits on my routing table, I can adjust the height of the blades and the, the way in which the blade cuts the frame and make the edges to make the drum. So with this particular uh, chamfer blade, I cut the inside of the leading edge, which uh, is necessary for certain types of drums, uh, or I don't cut it for other types of drums. And then I'll use a uh, round over edge to create either the leading edge where I get uh, a Guru Timpani style edge and I'll show, show you those in just a minute and or I will get just the rounded bottom edge for comfort of playing especially with the Irish drums if somebody's hand is going to be inside of it uh, I want to make sure that there's a comfortable edge in case your arm brushes against the edge of the drum. So I'll use this guy for that. If there's a sh if it's a shaman drum, I won't necessarily put a thumb hole in it, but if it's a frame drum, like an Iranian style frame drum, sometimes I will use the drill press, uh, get it set up where I can just adjust, I'll come to this size, I'll just uh, use this graduated hole drill and then I can just drill into the frame when it's all cut and make it the size of a thumb and we'll look at some of that close up with some of the finished drums but this is what I use to cut my holes and then I'll come back to the table saw and run the edge of the frame along the table saw just to make a channel into which I can tuck the skin when I'm gluing it. That way it, there's no bump where the edge of the skin meets the, the shell and I can cover that with a trim, a twill trim, in order to additionally seal the skin to the drum. It looks a little better and it's more comfortable if your arm drapes over the edge of the frame. So this is what some of the finished raw frames look like. This is uh, an Irish Bowden style, and it does not have any trimming on the inside of the frame. The reason for that is this is the traditional way a round, steamed frame for an Irish drum would be normally. But what I do differently 
obviously is I make my frames in a barrel style, but I also use the Guru Timpani style leading edge, which gives the drum a hair more movement on the center with the fulcrum created by the extra space on the edge, and it gives me some more space to glue the edge of the head down to this channel. Uh, it's almost the same style as a shaman style, but if you can see here, this has the tapered edge, and that gives even more movement and bounce on the inside, which increases the sustain and accents the bass frequencies as well. So this is a finished 13 moon shaman drum and then I will move from here to the non-dust areas and do design work, wood burning work, staining work, gluing of the head, sanding of the head if necessary, covering the trim, doing the finishing. The finishing that I usually do is either a uh, wood oil that I sand in to the frame or uh, I use a polissoir, which is a, basically it's broom straw, tightly bound, soaked in wax, uh, often with oil, and I will use that to burnish the wood. So one of those two styles of finishing is what I often use for my drums because it will either give a natural antique look or it will give a um, traditional shiny glossy look both of which are really good if you're going to be playing a drum with your hand over the top it's comfortable it doesn't matter if your arm if you're sweating during a performance or something like that and it just looks nice Part of, of course, my drums aesthetic is it's a Lovecraftian influenced style drum. So beyond the acoustics of using the barrel style drum, I also want them to look ancient and terrifying in their ritualistic presentation. So that's yet another reason that I use the uh, burnishing or the oil finishes that I choose to use. And that's it for this particular video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the behind the scenes of Caesar Drums Wood Shop. And I will do more videos like this with some instructional and some details of how I create the drums and why. And thank you for being here. And don't forget to visit my Etsy shop at HTTPS colon slash slash www.etsy.com slash shop slash Caesar Drums. See you next time.